Have you noticed that when you ask someone to do something, when you show someone how you wanted to do it, they don't always live up to your expectations? So, how do you solve that problem? Well, that's our question today. Hi everyone, welcome again to another episode of Eternity Changers. This is the show where I help you pursue your dream and your calling, whatever that is. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to drop me a line. Paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact if you prefer to just leave a comment. You can always do that below, by the way, below the video, either on YouTube or on my site, or hit me up on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, that's P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. One thing that I've noticed is when I ask someone to do something, there are actually three possible responses. One, they'll go above and beyond. This is very rare. Two, they'll do exactly what I've asked. Or three, they'll do less than what I've asked. Now, less than what I've asked could be absolutely nothing. I've noticed this with my children. I ask my uh, youngest to do the dishes, which is her chore, and she doesn't. Not even a little bit. So that is much, much, much less. And this may not necessarily help with what with that sort of situation. But I think what I want to address is what happens when they do less than what you ask, but it's still in the realm of what you're asking. So it's, you know, my daughter starts to put away the dishes. My, uh, well, let me tell you the story that got me thinking about this. When I was, uh, the Sunday after my church's leadership retreat, we came back and we were in church and we were having worship and it was just incredible. And you might know by the long hair that I have a little bit of a rock background. Uh, when I was a teenager, heavy metal, rock and roll, those were my kind of music. So at that kind of concert, you really can go all out in your physical reactions to the music. Well, we had some pretty cool uh, rock and worship music, and I just was going pretty much all out. In the same way that I would have as a teen at a rock concert, um, you're just going all out. And I noticed that I was doing a lot of the same stuff that was going on on the stage. So the worship leader, and uh, they were just really dancing around and going for it. And I thought, oh, I'm doing basically what they're doing. But most of the people around me are not. Now, most of the people are engaged. Some are lifting their hands. Some are waving their arms but not very few people were jumping up and down and just really really getting into it like I was and it occurred to me that maybe this is what they wanted maybe they knew that however they led people would follow a little bit below so if they only led with some response they'd probably get no response. Now some people would respond a little bit, but it's certainly the case that most people will respond less than how they're led. Now some will, as I say, reach that same level and some will go above and beyond, but those are the exceptions. For the most part, people will 
not quite raised to the level. And I was thinking about this in parenting because as parents, we're leaders. We're influencing our children, which influences what leadership is. And I was thinking of how over the generations, we've seen a slow moral decline in our country. Now, let's not get too political about all this. I think actually, from a practical standpoint, what is going on is that the uh, World War II generation led their children to a certain level, and those children rebelled down a little level. And the, the baby boomers, they led their children to a certain level, and their children rebelled down a level. And the Gen Xers are leading their children to a certain level, and their children are rebelling down a level. So you can see how maybe the World War II generation would have been okay with this level of how children react, but now we're okay with this level. Although we wouldn't turn down this level. And so, if you're listening to the audio, you might not get what I'm saying, so let me describe it. When you have multi-generations of leadership, each level of followers who become the next generation of leaders follow almost as well. And if they follow almost as well, then by three or four generations, you're going to get much worse than what the original generation imagined. So how do we combat this? How do we combat this eventual lowering of expectations to basically no expectations after enough generations of leadership? I think what we need to do is we need to lead people to do more than we expect. So my uh, when I was in college, I was part of a chorale, uh, a singing group, and my freshman and sophomore year, that professor, she would always tell us, to be early is to be on time, to be on time is to be late, and to be late is to be left. So she had this expectation that she was leading us to, which was, be early. But I'm not really an early person, so I would always get there just on time, maybe even a little late. And so the question is, how could she have properly dealt with this? Well, I think that one good strategy is to lead people to be there even earlier than early. So if you say, hey, we need to leave at 6 o'clock, some people are going to show up at 5.45, some are going to show up at 6, uh, the vast majority of people are going to show up between 6 and 6.15, and a few people are going to show up at 6.30. So if you actually want people to leave at 6, maybe you should say, we're going to leave at 5.30. Now, there's a danger in doing that. The danger is that after a few times, people are going to start noticing, wait, we didn't actually leave till 6, so I've got till 6. And then that'll start to slip a little bit more, and the next thing you know, it's they're showing up at 6.15 and finally 6.30. So you have to maintain the pressure of the higher standard. That's tip number one, is you must put forth a higher standard and maintain the pressure of that higher standard. So, what you want to do is you don't want the bus to show up that we're leaving from. You don't want that bus to show up at 6.15. You want that bus to show up before the first person shows up. 
and as the leader, you want to be the first person to show up so that there's this constant pressure like, oh, come on, it's 545, where is everyone? We're leaving at 6, even though you're actually of the opinion that it's okay if we leave at 630. So maintaining the higher pressure, maintaining the illusion that you want things to go a little bit better than you actually want them to go. But you've got to be careful with this because you can overdo it. Here's a, another tip and another caution. When you're leading, make sure that you do not lead to the point where if someone does everything you say or does more, then that's bad too. So you want to, in our example, there might be people that even though you have told them to show up at 5.30, show up at 5.15. When they show up at 5.15, it should, you should have circumstances set up so that they don't feel like they're early. If there was some other thing that you were trying to accomplish, make sure that circumstances aren't set up to where if someone goes above and beyond, they've actually broken something. They've actually caused a problem. So, I'm kind of thinking of Sometimes politics can be this way. If a politician says, this other party is doing this thing and it's horrible and we've got to take action, there will be some people that here take action as armed revolt. That's too much. We need to figure out a way for, if you're a leader, lead people to more than what you want but not so much that it causes problems. Do you understand how that's a problem? You don't want someone to go above and beyond, and in going above and beyond, cause worse problems than if they'd just been on your level or below. So that is kind of another tip. You know, I, I don't want... I don't want my daughter, as she's washing the dishes, to get so good at it that she removes my plate before I am done eating. That's, that's way too far above and beyond. Now, ideally, as soon as we're done eating, she would take the plates and put them in the dishwasher. That would be better. But, I'm okay with... Sometime before she goes to bed, she takes all the plates and puts them in the dishwasher and starts it. That's fine, too. So you see how if you can lead a person to do something that's above where your expectations are, sometimes they will meet them, sometimes they will surpass them, and sometimes they will go underneath them. And what you want is you want them to hit the range of your actual expectations. Let me give you a, a perfect example of where someone went above my expectations because I led them to do more than I actually expected. And I was okay if they only hit my actual expectations. I've got a box over here that I'm going to grab real quick. So recently, uh, I, as you may know, follow a lot of people on Twitter. Well, I followed Kramer Electronics, and what they make is they make audio-video gear, uh, typically for presentations or broadcasts, that kind of stuff. So I followed them, and they sent me a note that said, Hey, you're our 1800th follower on Twitter. We would like to send you a gift to thank you. So I basically won a contest. Well, so I said, great. Why don't you send me either a streaming appliance or an HDMI distribution amplifier? Now, you don't need to know what those are. You just need to know that they're expensive pieces of equipment. So what I, 
I sent that to them kind of jokingly. You know, I did the little winky face because it's on Twitter. And, and what I expected to get was something like this. This is a lanyard from them. Uh, I expected to get a pin from them. I expected maybe to get some of these cool cable wraps. Maybe a drink cozy. Um, I just didn't expect them to give me very much at all. But... I'll leave a link to the video below. What happened when I got the stuff in the mail was I got all that, but I also got this. This is one of their products. Um, sending it to me was above and beyond, but I would led them in a, hey, why not send it to me kind of way, knowing that I probably wouldn't get it. And that's how you've got a lead is in a, why not do this, knowing you probably won't get that? But occasionally, people will surprise you, and I will get exactly what I asked for. This is an HDMI DA. It's about a $112 product. So while they may have initially intended to send out $5 worth of swag, they ended up sending me $112 piece of equipment just because I let up and said hey why not send me something nicer and they delighted me with that so sometimes you'll be delighted with the results when you lead someone to do something that you really you don't think they'll do but you think wouldn't it be great if they did and when you do that and you engage with people that have that kind of I'm going to go above and beyond mentality. That, my friends, is how you can go out and change eternity. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this video.